I'm Michael, and I'm going to do a solo playthrough of Ancient Realm by Stephen Aramini. This is a button-shy solo wallet game. It came in the most recent uh, delivery of the solo series. It was a double Kickstarter. It was Ancient Realm as well as uh, River Wild. The funny thing is, when I saw River Wild, I thought, oh, this is the one I'm going to be really into. It's got a fantasy theme. You're, like, building a pink river. There's dragons and unicorns, like, you know, it's all the the goofy fantasy stuff I like. But when I actually got the Kickstarter, once I started looking at Ancient Realm, I kind of got more excited about the gameplay of this one, surprisingly. Um, but it definitely is kind of interesting little like city builder where you manage some inventory and some resources. And yeah, so um, I'm going to do a little solo kind of tutorial playthrough here, and I'll explain it as I go. So I already have it pretty much laid out here. Um, as with most button shy games, it's great, easy setup because they're all 18 card wallet games. So first, you got to set out the four resources it's your money wheat wood and stone and the cool thing too is the starting number is surrounded by this little white barrier to let you know so money is three wheat is one wood is one and stone is one easy peasy they can each go up to seven and as you play the max is seven if you ever get more than seven you have to stop at seven and then you with the leftover cards, you have the district cards and you have the wonder cards. And then they get shuffled. It's seven each. They get shuffled and set into two separate piles. And then last, all you do is set out your market cards. It's two from each. So it's one, two from the districts and one, two from the wonders. And that is your starting market cards. And then all you have to do is leave a little bit of space up here for your city as you build it it could get pretty big but this should be definitely enough space it's nice that it kind of fits out on this uh standard card map all right i'm gonna start with the anatomy of the district cards so district cards are broken into three sections called blocks each block contains a citizen a mine or a resource region that can be field forest or quarry and they all correlate with our storage cards at the bottom so going from left to right, talking about these blocks, we have the quarry. It's gray to match the stone card at the bottom. It has a little picture of what it is. And then below that in brown, it shows when you activate this card, the cost for this card, which would be one coin. And then below that is what you receive for activating this card, which would be one stone. Then we have the woodsman. A woodsman has this little blue symbol. It kind of looks like, a, like a, some sort of hood. It's possibly, I like to call them commoners. There's two types of citizens. There's also red citizens that have a crown. I like to call them royals. There's some cards that kind of differentiate between the two of them. It's kind of something to keep in mind. And much like the quarry, it also costs one coin to activate this. And then for that, you usually get some sort of special multiplier with the citizens. And for this guy, you would get double the wood in your storage. And then last, we have a mine. A mine has the yellow symbol. It looks kind of like a little gate. And then it will have, in purple, victory points that you could win at the end. Um, so there's two different things you can do with a mine. You can either activate it or leave it in your town. If it's left in your town, it would give you these extra victory point conditions, as noted here. So in this example, it would be two per you know, resource card you still had out. Um, or resource region you still had out in your city, so be it, you know, a quarry, a field, or a forest. Alternately, if you wanted to activate this instead, you could cover it just like the other cards and then get two coins. And then we have a wonder card. Wonder cards are divided into two sections, one block and one large wonder, which lists the cost of placing the card. So in this example in the brown there, it says that this wonder costs two wood and two wheat. Then a couple other things to note about this card. In purple there, to the right of that, is the victory points you would get at the end of the game. In this case, it would be five. And then below that, in green, when you activate a quarry, you gain one more stone. So that would be an ongoing effect you would get as long as this wonder was in your city. 
Also, when I made that note about the royal cards earlier, this supplier would be one example of those. She has the little red symbol with the crown. She's still considered a citizen, but I've noticed that it seems like the royals kind of give you a little bit better bonuses. She would also still cost one coin, but instead of just getting one item from her, she would add one item to each empty resource card. So there's a chance of possibly getting three resources if you're at zero. And then we have a couple of things we can do during an active turn to keep in mind. On the back of each district card, there's an event that is active while it is on top of the district deck. The active event's effect may be used at any time during a turn as long as any requirements are met. When the district deck is depleted, there is no active event. So in this case right now we have, you may trade a gold for an item up to two times per turn. And then the wonder card has a nice little reminder on the back of it about the rule on abandoning wonders. So you can abandon an unbuilt wonder to gain an item or two gold. You would just take that wonder from the market or the top of the wonder deck. You can even do it if your wonder deck is empty um, or even if you have less than four cards in the market. And then the last little rule is you can at any time pay two gold to gain one resource, it can be wheat, wood, or stone. You would just have to stick to that rule I mentioned earlier that you can never gain more than seven. And should you gain more than seven, you just have to leave it at seven. And that's it. So let's go ahead and give it a go. All right. Our ongoing effect is I can trade one gold for one item up to two times per turn. I think, I think I'm going to start with the lighthouse. And I'm going to trade two gold for one wood and one wheat because the lighthouse takes two wood and two wheat so i'll knock this down to one knock this to two i can put out my lighthouse these are now zero all right we're on a roll so now i really like this one gold for two items but now i only have one gold left Hmm. Oh, but I can add one item to each empty resource if I cover that supplier. So that'll automatically give me some items. So I think I'll put a wonder out. But once you've played a card, the end of the turn is you put a new card out. And you can pick from either side. So it's kind of like you can kind of hold on to these as you go. All right, so the new wonder is the Hanging Gardens. It costs three wood, one stone, two wheat, nine victory points. And when I activate blocks, I hire any commoner for free. That's pretty awesome. But that's expensive, too. So I think I'm going to... I'm going to activate this, and I'm going to go ahead and use the supplier. So the way you activate cards is you put them above, and you move them down. And so now I'm at the coin, so I need to pay my coin. That's my last coin. And then now I can add an item to each empty resource card. So that brings me back to one and one, but now I'm out of money. I'm going to go ahead and flip this guy over since I don't have any money. It's not going to really do me any benefit. So the new district card says productivity abounds. When you activate a quarry, field, or forest, gain one more resource of the same type. That's pretty cool. This takes... So we're still trying for one wood... Two stone, three wheat. I think I'm gonna. Three wheat. This would. This farmer. Activating this farmer would double my wheat. But that's not gonna do me any help right now. Hmm. I'm gonna. 
I think I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna do this. Oh, I don't have any cash. I need cash money, so I'm gonna have to cover a mine. I'm gonna have to cover a mine to get some money. Or I could abandon a wonder and just get two money now. Hmm, I think I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna abandon a wonder, get two money. Then I'm going to Oh, and this one gives me two victory points per abandoned wonder. So I'm just going to I'm going to activate all three of these. I'm just going to go for it. So I go down. I'm going to get I pay two gold, but then I'm going to gain two two stones because I gain one more resource. So that's three. And then I'm going to double the amount of wood in my storage. So that's two. And then I gain two gold back. So that was pretty good. And now I have my two victory points per abandoned wonder, but then that would lock them in there because I can't fit a card in here or over the lighthouse. I'm going to go ahead and do another one of these. I'm probably going to regret it. I always plow through these. Treasurer, double the money in your storage. Five victory points if I have more commoners than royals. And a forest. And then when building a wonder, pay one less item. Okay. So where am I at? One, two, three. I think I can... Oh, I have the opposite of what I need. I need one more of each of these. To... Do the hanging garden. I need a wheat and a wood. Wheat and a wood. All right, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm just not seeing any. I wish I had a wheat and a wood together, but, I mean, that doesn't happen. I'm going to do... this wheat here... And it's only going to cost me one coin. And then I get a wheat. I'm sorry, I get a wood. And two coins. One, two. I'm going to put out a wonder. It might be... We're saturating the wonders now. Oh, the Great Pyramid. He costs two wood, three stone, and two wheat. Ooh. Ooh. And it's ten victory points plus one per commoner. And I already have two commoners out. And I would just need the one... I would just need the one wheat. I would just need the one wheat. Hanging Gardens is when activating blocks higher commoners for free. Colossus is when you activate a mine, you gain one more money. Hmm. I like this playing one less item. I guess I could just do it. Actually, I think I'm going to... Yeah. Because I could pay one less item. I can just do the Great Pyramid now. That's kind of great. So I'm going to go ahead and build the Great Pyramid here. And that's going to cost me two wood, three stone, 
and one wheat because I'm using the other wheat for my special. And I'll put this out. Hmm. I don't need this mine because it's two per royals. I have like no royals out. <laughs> when you activate a mine, gain one more money. Oof. I never do very good. I'm always like right close to the lowest on this. I need to find the sweet spot. I'm going to put out this one here on the field. It's going to cost me one coin. I get one wheat. This modifier is two victory points per wonder adjacent to wonder. Oh, great. So I would just get two victory points for that. I'm going to put out how many wonders I have. Two. I'm going to put out this. Our new The Realm Unites when activating blocks, hire citizens for free. Oh. And citizen means royal or commoner. It's just citizens. So let's see. I'm already down to two cards here, one card here. Oof. This gets hard. All right, I think I'm going to start covering some of these people. I'm going to go ahead, because I have two coins. And activating blocks hire citizens for free. I wish I had more citizens next to each other, but... If I do this... Here... That citizen would be free, but I'd pay one coin for the wheat. I would get two coins for the quarry, sorry, for the mine, and then I would double the wheat in my storage to four. I don't know how, much, how beneficial that is. I'm going to go ahead, put out another wonder. When activating blocks, hire royals for free. And then I haven't even used this quarry bonus, which is a bummer. So, now the cool thing about the king and queen is they have special multipliers. So the queen... I get two items if the king is in the realm, and I do have the king in the realm. And the king, I get four coins if the queen is in the realm. So, I could knock those out. I think I'm gonna. So I'm going to... When activating blocks, hire citizens for free... I have three coins. I'm going to do this here. I only would pay one. I get another wheat. <laughs> but I would get four coins because the queen is in the realm. Plus two. I'd have to stop at seven for that. So that's that one. And then I'm going to Put 
put out the last. Ooh, I'll put out the last. No, I'll put out this guy. What do we got? Bishop, mine, and the, and the collector. So right now, I need, to, I need to check out what my victory points are at. So I get five victory points if I have more commoners than royals for this mine. Five points. Ten points plus one per commoner. So I definitely want to focus on commoners. And then I get two points per adjacent wonder. I could spend four I could spend four of these to get the two quarry I need here. And put out the Colossus. And I can cover the quarry and the queen. And then when I build a wonder, I gain an item or two coins. Okay, okay. So a lot's happening now. So I'm going to get, I need to pay my items first. So I'm going to pay one wood, two stone, and three wheat. And then I get one quarry. But when I activate a quarry, I gain one more, so I get two. And then when the king is in the realm, I get two items. So I'm going to go ahead and get two of these. And then I also get, when you build a realm, you get an item or two coins. So let me decide what I want. An item or two coins. An item or two coins. An item or two coins. I think I'm going to get two coins. I need to put out this wonder. Whoops. Oh, this only costs two wood and two stone. All right, so now this is where I just have to see what I can do the best. This mine, I would get five if more than two royals or citizens. Right now, I have one of each. If I just get one more of either out, I'd be set. I want more I want more commoners and citizens in order to get the five points from this. So I feel like I want the statue of Zeus. Yeah, and this is seven points compared to five points because this takes two wood, two stone. This is two wood, two stone plus one wheat, but it's seven. An acting blocks higher. Royals for free. Yeah. I'm going to do this one, which is two wood, two stone, and one wheat. Now I just need to decide where I want to put it. Probably here, because then I can get another two points. I'm gonna put it here. Get another two. Get another two. Co so yeah, I'm gonna put it here. Pay the one coin, and then I get 
two rocks because I have when you activate you gain one more rock stone sorry stone and then I'm also getting the two points per wonder adjacent to a wonder on a roll that makes me have two commoners so that's two commoners and that's one that's still more than the royals that I have here All right, where am I at now? And then Am I going off the screen? Not quite yet. If I oh, I would get one item for each. Well, that, that would be only if I cover it. But the mine here I would get four per wonder adjacent to this mine. If I could put this next to a wonder, and I could take out that royal. Double the money in your storage. Let's do this. So I'm going to put this here. So it costs two. So I'm down to two. When you activate blocks, hire royals for free. So it's actually just one. So I'm still at three. Because I'm... Oh, wait, no. Yes, because this is a royal. Sorry. This treasure is a royal, so that's free. So I'm only being charged for the forest here. So that's that. So I'm gaining... When you activate a mine, gain one for th three. So I'm doubling the money in my storage. So that becomes six. When I activate a, a mine, gain one for free. That doesn't make a difference. I'm just going to go to seven for these. And then wood. Do I get anything from the wood? No. So I just get a wood. But I still have more. commoners then royals oh which doesn't matter anymore because i think i covered it and then now i can pay Oh shoot, I covered that one that I was going for. This is just a stack of cards here. I have so much money and I have two of these. So it's three wood, I only have one wood, one stone, and two wheat. So if I could just use my money, this one would be the better one to get out of the two. Oh yeah, there it is. 10 plus 1 per commoner. So I still do want commoners. So I think I want to build... I think I want to build the hanging gardens. So I'm going to use money to have this. Oh, I can use 6 to go down to 1 to give me one of these that I need and the two of these I need. So that way I can buy the hanging garden, which is three wood, one stone, and two wheat. And then, where do I want to put it? If I, co I can't cover both of them. I don't, they'll give me money. So I think I just want to put them next to it. Oh, when act, oh, that's when it's already out. Yeah, so this power, it, it doesn't count when it's being put in. It, it only counts once it's placed. 
So that's it. I think I'm done. I've discarded one. And so now I just need to figure out my totals. Each wonder in mind, like I mentioned before, have a scoring condition. And then additionally, I score one point for every three gold and two resources of any combination of storage. I only have one stone and one coin, so that does me nothing. So now I just need to look at my multipliers up here. So I get nine for the hanging gardens, four per wonder adjacent to this mine. I don't have anything adjacent. Five for this lighthouse. Ten plus one per commoner. So ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Two per wonder adjacent to wonder for this mine. So that's two, four, and then seven points. So that's a total of 47. And the ranks, the way the ranks work, zero to 49 is ruinous. So I, I didn't even get... I didn't even get to 50, which is adequate. I mean, I was close. The best I've done so far is 49, but there's also an expansion that came with it. I think yeah, it adds monuments, which is kind of cool, and they're like a whole additional pink little card. So, yeah, I, I really dig this game, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. But, yeah, please like and subscribe and all that fun stuff, and keep it spoopy. Yeah.